So in the next few minutes, I'm just going to shift gears and change to my Taurus software. So Taurus is a, is a plugin application which, uh, which sits on top of AutoCAD or AutoCAD CD3D or, uh, or MicroStation. And what I'm using here is 2016 version of CV3D, but we will soon support up until the latest, so 2017. And, uh, and we will also support other CAD platforms. What I'm using here is, um, is an image, an aerial photo of a German uh, turbo roundabout layout. And I'm just going to quickly show it to you how easy it is to, uh, to match this layout, so to design a turbo roundabout like this. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the roundabout wizard, which is a, very, which is a new tool, and it's an easy way to lay out a design. So I'm going to use a turbo roundabout I'm going to design, and it has three legs. So in the drawing, I have some, uh, some reference geometries. These could be civil 3D alignments. Those could be polylines or arcs or, uh, or simple lines. What I'm using here is, uh, or what I'm seeing here actually, these are the standard types of the Dutch uh, turbo roundabout guideline, which I can start with. So I'm going to start with uh, the layout which is called star. And these blue arrows shows you, show you that this is a layout which, is, uh, which has been created for uh, a fairly uh, equal amount of traffic flows at all three legs. So I'm going to do now is that uh, Taurus uses some design guidelines which are the criteria sets of certain roundabout designs. So if you are designing roundabouts in your own region, you would need to set up these design guidelines first, and those would be the criteria sets, the templates, which Taurus uses uh, when, when designing roundabouts. So here I was using um, uh, the Dutch uh, design guideline, but I also have a regionalized one for German tuber roundabouts, and what you will see is that the shape of, um, of the central island has changed. So instead of those perpendicular angles and, and lane introductions, I have now these curved lane introductions, which are again based on the vehicle swept path. So here I just hit finish, and I uh, go ahead and start designing my, uh, my roundabout. Perhaps I can fade this image a little bit and then go back, edit the roundabout. So what I have here is, um, as you see, I don't have any track aprons at the background, so I'm going to turn off the track apron and then I'm going to go into every leg to change those parameters. First of all, what I see is that the image at the background, it only has two inner legs uh, two, two entry, sorry, two entry lanes to start with. Uh, so I'm just going to decrease those, uh, that number to two. Also, what we see is that exit lanes are also different. In Taurus, you can change the exit lanes by changing the lane configuration of a turbo roundabout design. So what I would need to do is to set a lane where the innermost spiraling lane is forced to exit. Currently, it is set for, uh, for the same lag as the entry. So basically, a vehicle which approaches from this lag and takes the innermost lane, if it, if it continues to, to use the circulatory as long as it can, then it is forced to exit at the same leg. So this is a U-turn maneuver what it can do. However, in this, in this layout, at the background, it is forced to, to exit uh, northbound if we are taking this, this leg from southbound. 
So I'm just going to choose it to be the spiral exit lag at approach 2. And I'm going to do that again, uh, do the same for the three legs. Okay. What I also, you also see is that vehicles from the inner circulating lane are not allowed to exit. So there is only one exit leg at each roundabout leg, uh, one exit lane at each roundabout leg. So what I'm going to do is uh, we have a setting to do that, which triggers the lane configuration in that way. If I go back, I can adjust the central uh, island location and this also gives me a good potential to show you what Taurus is using. So Taurus is using uh, a turbo block what we call. This is a, a skeleton, a framework of a turbo roundabout and this is calculated based on the assigned design vehicles as those vehicles are spiraling out and they are uh, the vehicle path, the radius of the vehicle path is getting higher and higher. Obviously, the lane width requirements are getting lower and lower. So, this is happening in the background. I can turn this on as well. So, this is the turbo block. This is how the turbo block is used to figure out uh, the layout of the turbo roundabout. So I'm just turning off uh, these extra informations and what I see here as well is I now have the exact lane configuration that I had in the background. However, I have some, uh, some extra, extra details to, to take care of. I don't have these physical lane separators here, so I can turn that on, off. And also the opening width, I have two ways to control that. One is based on the vehicle swap path where a vehicle movement is calculated and then tolerance is applied from then. And the other one is just uh, a simple uh, distance measured from, uh, from the edge of the central island. So I think this is a somewhere around eight, 8 meters at this roundabout. Again, these are just only pay, uh, pavement markings. So those are, those are only some paintings. But I would like to, uh, to match this roundabout 100%. Uh, going further, I can obviously turn off uh, the crosswalks and also what I can do is I can uh, make the median a little bit narrower 